It's your third nightmare this week. Fourth, but who's counting? Good morning, ladies. I'm sorry, Dan. It's okay, Pumpkin. Sleep's overrated. I think we need to go see somebody. A psychiatrist. A counselor. Somebody to help you get over it. Dad? Mom? No. It's been two years. I'm not going to a psychiatrist. Well, we have to do something. Yeah, we do need to do something. We need to put that man in jail. Sophie, how many times have we talked about this? You gotta let it go. Let it go? How can I let it go after what he did to me? There is nothing we can do. I know it's not right, but sometimes bad people, they just, they get away with it. this to work. Oh, I do, too. I know we haven't talked about everything yet. What do you mean? There are some things in my past that you don't know about. And I'm sure there are things about you that I don't know about, right? Right. It's been three months now. And if we're going to have a life together, we shouldn't have any secrets. Hey, hmm. no matter what you tell me, I'm not going to stop loving you. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. <clears throat> when I was in college, I was in love with a woman. It was just a phase I was going through. And, well, I was thinking that Maybe you and I might share a woman for a night. If that's okay. If that's what you want. I would do it for you. Okay, <clears throat> that's my terrible past. Your turn. Well, <clears throat> about a year ago, I was involved in a court case. <laughs> No practice? You could say that. They accused me of terrible things. They were trying to send me to jail for a long time, but I managed to persuade one of the jurors to see it my way, and she convinced everybody else on the jury that I was innocent. The court finds Dr. Albert Beck not guilty. Everything's okay now, though. It's all in the past. What, what did they accuse you of? It's not important, baby. Hey, come on. No secrets, remember? Kidnapping and attempted murder. That uh, doesn't sound like malpractice. Well, it was complicated. Car accident. This, uh, this woman comes in the ER. Uh, we operated on her heart for like eight hours. <laughs> She had a real dicey recovery, and she needed a doctor to look after her 24-7. And the only place I could really look after was at my house. And, well, the police took her side in the matter. So silly. Like I said, it was all just a big misunderstanding. Oh, gosh. Look what time it is. I'm going to be late for that meeting. Baby, I don't make mistakes like that anymore. I'm not even practicing medicine anymore. I'm going to be a college professor. Oh, I know. <clears throat> I won't call you. You, I said you'd love me no matter what I told you. <laughs> you lied to me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it so you can't tell any more lies. I'm going to cut your tongue out. Who are you kidding? No, you won't. She deserves it. No, she doesn't. You heard what she said. She said she loved me unconditionally. Who are you talking to? She said the past didn't matter, that we had a future together. Dude, you need to take your pill. I loved her. Pill.
Martha, Sophie, you ready to hit the road? Yeah, Dad. Give me five. All right. A little something in case you need it. Dad. Come on, honey, take it. Sometimes the food they serve at the dorm is awful. You said so yourself. That way, if you're hungry, you can walk down to the village and get some dinner, right? Okay. I'm not going to use it. Here's your clothes, fresh from the laundry. Thanks, Mom. And speaking of money, are you sure we're all paid up for tuition this semester? Yeah, we are. Because I don't remember getting a bill from Wittendale. Honey, did you? No. No, no, I thought you took care of it. Mom, Dad, relax. They wouldn't enroll me in classes this semester. If we weren't paid up, we're fine. All right. Okay, I want to get going so I don't have traffic. I got it. Dad, I'm a big girl. I can carry my own suitcase. Yes, ma'am. Call us when you get to Wittendale. I will. Drive safe. I always do. Love you, honey. Be careful. doctor who cares deeply for his fellow man, and I'm excited to have him join us here on campus. When he was chairman of the President's Task Force on Heart Disease, he single-handedly revolutionized the way the world approaches cardiovascular surgery. And now, as dean of the medical department, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you your new instructor for this semester, Dr. Albert Feck. Um, hi. Uh, welcome to, um, Cardiological, Cardiological Systems 101B. <laughs> Strange name for class. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It seems to fit the, uh, the material that we'll be discussing this semester. I read about you on the internet. Did you kidnap that girl? What's your name? Victoria. Victoria. Victoria, if what you read on the internet were true, do you think this great university would have hired me? Probably not. Of course not. A lot of doctors are wrongfully accused in this country. Malpractice, very common. It's also something that all of you may have to deal with once you start practicing. Am I right? Absolutely. And on that note, the first thing I'd like to teach you guys is that I will run this class the same way I run an operating room. It doesn't matter if you're a nurse or an anesthesiologist or the chief surgeon. You will arrive on time. What's your name? Uh, Melissa. Melissa Peterson. Look, I, it is such an honor to meet you, Dr. Beck. I am so sorry I'm late. I ran all the way from the... Oh, easy, easy. Oh, baby. Oh, whoa, easy. Uh, okay, don't worry, she just fainted. Has this ever happened to you before? Like when you stand up too fast or you get grossed out? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like she has vasovagal syncope. When the vagus nerve is overstimulated, your blood vessels dilate and your heart slows down. Happens to a lot of people. You'll be fine. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay. God, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be. You shouldn't be doing this. This doesn't concern you. Oh man, you really think you could be normal, don't you? 
teaching job, mansion, sports car, hot chick to run out the package. Shut up and leave me alone. I'm not gonna leave you alone, because you got a big-ass problem and you don't see it. All right, Mr. Smart Guy, what's my problem? Younger women. They're poison to you. Well, then how come, how come they're so much nicer to me than older women? Because you're so old that younger women think you're harmless. They don't know you're just really a dirty old man. That's not true, man. When I fall in love with a girl, it's for real. It is honest. <laughs> honest. Yeah, right. Is that why you're out in the middle of the night following Melissa around with a camera? Because you're so honest? I'm not having this conversation. Delete the photos. No. And stay away from her, man. Stay away from all women. It's the only way you're going to keep out of trouble, pal. So what am I supposed to do? Live the rest of my life alone? With no one to love? That's the deal. Well, the deal stinks. Sure does. But it beats the hell out of prison. Okay, that's all the time we've got. Hand in the quiz. We'll pick this up next week. Hey, Dr. Beck. Um, I'm still um, a little confused over the whole blood platelets thing. I was hoping maybe you had some time to answer a few questions. Sure. Have a seat. Mm -hmm. Could you just, I don't know, maybe explain it all again? Sure. Uh, the number one thing platelets do is they help stop bleeding at the site of interrupted endothelium. Mm -hmm. And when the platelets change shape and turn on the receptors, we call that what? Activation. Good girl. And when they connect, here's the big one, to each other, we call that ag... Aggregation? See, it's not so well. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Is that you with the president? Yeah. That was a long time ago. something to eat. Oh, um, I can't. I, um, I have this huge, uh, application I have to fill out for this financial scholarship, and it's, it's due tomorrow, and I really do have to go. are going to prove to be really helpful over the next couple of assignments. If you don't have one, take one, pass them around. I know it's a bit old school, but when you take notes this way, 
The information has a way of sticking to the brain cells, which is the whole point, right? Is this some kind of sick joke? <laughs> Excuse me? Which one of you did this? Who put those magazines in my handbooks? I'm paying $45,000 a year in tuition for this. Sophie Green. Hey, Sophie. This yours? Stay away from me. Thought you were going to Wittendale. Transferred. When? When I heard you were going to be teaching here. So that's why you put those magazines in my classroom? Trying to get me fired? I don't know what you're talking about. Security cameras videotaped you breaking into the room, Sophie. Yeah? Well, you deserve it. What do you want from I me? I want you in jail. This man kidnapped me. He tried to kill me. That's not true. Trying to interest more people in your fake lawsuit. <sighs> oh, my God. You're bipolar. You are delusional. I'm delusional? We had experts in that quorum that proved it. And in case you forgot, they found me not guilty. That jury was rigged. That trial was a joke. Whose life are you going to try to ruin next time? One of your teachers? Your dentist? Going to make up stories about him so you can sue and make a fortune? Wow. You're good. The only reason you didn't get rich trying to ruin me is because I fought her in court. Stay away from him, girls. This man is a pervert. I saved your life. And this is how you thank me. All I've got left is his teaching job. And now you want to take that, too? Oh, you bet. I started a petition to get you fired. And it won't stop until you're locked in a hole for good. Hey, why don't you leave him alone, OK? He doesn't deserve this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What do you know, bitch? What did you call whoa, me? Whoa, 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 no, no, we're not doing this. Just stay the hell away from me. It was that girl who put the magazines in your class. I'm sorry you have to go through this. So I just want to make sure I understand this. You want me and my crew to do a little attitude adjustment on some guy you know? Yeah, just rough him up a little bit. Now send him a message. Who's the guy? Does it matter? Yeah, it matters. Is he a cop? No, it's a doctor. <laughs> All right. So uh, what did this doctor do to you? It's a long story, and you don't need to know. Can you do it or not? Look, you want me to do something for you? Then uh, you got to do a little something for me. Uh, 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 uh. No. 
some time out. Hey, Dr. Kidnapper! No, no, no! Dr. Beck? Dr. Beck? Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, Are you okay? I need... What happened? I need... I need to get to my classroom. No, no you need to go to the emergency no. room. No. To my classroom. Okay, okay, well, let me help you. Let me help you. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I hurt all over, but my arm... My yeah. arm... I don't know what's wrong. I take this. Okay. Ow. Man. Here. Man, oh, man. Tell me what you need. Oh, oh boy. Oh. We're gonna need to sew up my arm. Uh, okay. um, You're gonna do it. Me? <laughs> no. It's simple. I'll show you. Are you crazy? I can't sew up your arm. You wanna learn something in medical school or what? All right. Okay. Just tell me what to do. Let's start with this. You know, you did an excellent job. Really? You think so? I do. I think you're a natural at this. Well, I guess it's because I have a good teacher who literally bleeds for his students. <laughs> <laughs> you probably the last person on campus who feels that way. Over half my students dropped out of my class today and signed that petition. Yeah, I heard. How about you? Are you going to drop out of my class? You want to know the truth? I thought about it. But, um... I'm going to stay. I like your class, and who cares what Sophie Green and her friends have to say about you? I came here to learn how to be a doctor, so... that's what I'm going to do. Are you, uh, sure you're okay to drive? Oh, I'll be fine. Well, um... Do you have anyone at home to take care of you, your wife, or your girlfriend? Just me. Well, here, give me your phone. This is my number, and you can call me anytime tonight if you, you need anything. Okay? Don't even think about it. It, it doesn't even matter what time it is. Just call me, okay? Start the car, dude. We got places to go, things to do. In a minute. Come in. The way the moonlight dances down your long hair. That sparkle in your eyes just makes me stop and stare. But I have to apologize. I don't pay attention to that stuff. Cause I'm not the kind of guy who falls in love. The kindness in your smile that made me give you a chance. And your handsome movie star star could make me believe in romance But I have to apologize I don't fall for that stuff Cause I'm not the kind of girl who falls in love Just like the stars and sky You and I Together like a hand in glove It's too bad for me, too bad for you We're not the kind of people who fall in love
Thank you, Melissa. I'll see you in class. Green! It was you, wasn't it? What are you talking about? You hired those guys to beat up Dr. Beck, didn't you? I don't need to listen to this. Hey, I'm talking to you! Get oh. your hands off of me. Oh, I admit it! I know it was you! You tried to kill him, didn't you? You tried to kill him! I knew it was you! You're not gonna get away with this! You hear me? You're not gonna get away with this! Watch me. Oh. Fourteen of your students came to the office yesterday. They wanted to transfer to a different class. Well, you can thank Sophie Green for that. Oh, so now you're telling me she has some of her friends beat you up? Oh, uh, probably, yeah. You've got to get that girl out of the school, pal. Not that easy. There's no proof she was involved. Oh, come on. She's one who started the petition to get me fired. I can't kick a student out of school for protesting against a teacher, Albert. You know that. On the other hand, I just spent the last six months begging the board of directors to hire you. So I'm not going to let you go either. So what are you going to do? Tomorrow, 1 o'clock, you, me, Sophie, the board directors, we're going to meet in the conference room and come up with an arrangement so the two of you can coexist on campus. I don't think that's a good idea. It's not. It's a terrible idea. But that's what the board wants to do, so we're going to do it. Welcome to academia. I'll see you tomorrow. Sophie, may I speak to him in a minute? Save it for the meeting tomorrow. Please, honey, will you just have a look at this? I, uh... I had a lawyer draw it up. It's an agreement between you and me. It protects the both of us. It says we have to stay 100 yards away from each other, and if I'm in breach, it can sue me for everything I'm worth. And what if I'm in breach? Well, you just pay a fine, 50 bucks. Read it. Show it to your parents. I don't need to. You got a pen? Sure. Yeah. Shove it up your nose. I'm not signing anything. Now get away from me before I call security. Get away from me! Okay, call 911. Are you taking drugs without alcohol? No, I'm clean. I need something to uh, keep her warm. You have to keep her warm. Come on, guys. Yes, I have a young lady, 20. She's on the ground. She's shaking. I think she's going at the shock. We're at the lunch pavilion at the Southeastern Arizona University. Yes, I'll keep the line open. Okay, all right. Please, hurry. Oh, my God, fentanyl. She's taking fentanyl. Naloxone. We need naloxone. We used to have some at the nurse's office. I have some right here, I think. Let me look. Oh, my God, I do. Here we go. This is naloxone. I'm going to squirt this up your nose. It's going to counteract the drugs that are in your system. Ready? Snort this. Sniff. Good girl. Now. Sniff. Good girl. OK, now breathe deep. Breathe deep. Breathe. What do you think? She's addicted? Well, it looks that way. Everybody's getting hooked on painkillers. I mean, we have a whole country with an opiate addiction right now. Well, we got a drug-free policy on campus. I'm gonna have to tell the board of directors about this. Uh, shame. Looks like we can cancel that meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. You will. The board of directors and I gave this a great deal of thought. Personally, I think you're a bright young woman with a wonderful future ahead of you. 
Sophie, after reviewing this case for the last week, we come to the conclusion that we need to terminate your enrollment. You think I'm a drug addict, don't you? I didn't say that. Beck, put those drugs in my backpack. You don't care? You knew he was a pervert, but you gave him the job anyway. That man is a con artist and a fraud. Do you even have any idea how many students signed my petition? Your petition is irrelevant. 1,293. And count. Dr. Beck? I got the scholarship. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Dean Santez told me that you had something to do with it, so... Oh, and I heard about how Sophie overdosed at the lunch tables the other day and that you, you saved her life. Well, yeah, basically. That is so generous of you. I mean, she ruins your career, and, and yet you still helped her out. Ah, uh, you're going to be a doctor someday. You would have done the same thing. <laughs> you burned somebody like that? I'm not so sure. Son of a bitch! They kicked me out of school because of you! Oh, you set me up! Hey, you poisoned you me! Off of him! Don't you call him security! Somebody call security! Off of me! Hey, let him go! Hey, 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 we're getting a restraining order against you. You think you can just kick me out of school and shut me up? You think I'm going away? Get her out of here. I'm gonna let the whole world know you hired a sex predator to teach here. You're out of a job, you corporate pimp. You're done! You're done! All right, show's over. Back to class. Come on, back to class. I speak with you privately. Hey, Mom. I just got off the phone with the registrar's office at Wittendale. You remember Wittendale? The school that you're apparently not enrolled in? They said that you transferred to Southeastern Arizona University. Yeah, well, I don't go to Southeastern Arizona University anymore. They just kicked me out. Wait, hold on, what? Just forget it. it doesn't even matter. Sophie, that is where Dr. Beck teaches. Yeah, kind of. Look, whatever you're doing, you need to just stop it. Mom, just listen to me, all right? It's working. What's working? I think I just got him fired. Congratulations. And you're going to get yourself killed in the process. You need to leave that place, and you need to come home now. Mom, that's not going to happen, all right? I've got a plan that's going to get rid of him for good, and I'm following through. Honey, listen. Ever since you were tiny, you have always been brave. And you always do the right thing, and I love that about you. But this guy has made you suffer enough, and you don't have to do this. I know what you're going through. No. No, you do not. You don't know what I'm going through because he didn't kidnap you. He didn't try to kill you. I can't sleep at night. You know when you wake up and... And for a split second, you don't know where you're at. Every single morning when I open my eyes, it's just, it's just flash. But I swear to you, I'm back in that house. I'm in his bed. I'm tied up, and I have his hands on me. And I cannot shake it. And if I don't do something about it, I'm going to need meds for the rest of my life, because I'm going to go nuts. Oh, so... Why the hell do you have to be so stubborn? Got it from you. Mom, I need your help. And just you, you cannot tell Dad. Help with what? Look, I'll explain it to you later, but just please say yes. No. Please. Mom? I'm gonna do this, no matter what you say. Are you with me or not? What do you need me to do? <laughs> I
I have done nothing wrong since I got here. That woman's a liar and a drug addict. Have you seen how many students signed the petition? No. Over a thousand. Man. I don't need this kind of publicity, Al. If our donors find out about this, they're gonna pull my budget. Look, when I heard about your trial, I really wanted to help you get your life back together again. I really did. This is just too much. I'm sorry. Dr. Beck. Hey, Dr. Beck. Hey. They uh, rescheduled my class with you for a different day and a different teacher. What happened? They, uh, they let me go. It's because of that disgusting piece of crap, Sophie Green, isn't it? Hey, doesn't do any good to blame her. It just didn't work out, that's all. Well, um, can I ask you something? Sure. You can just be honest. Um, is there... Any truth in what she's saying about oh, you? Oh, none at all. She made up this elaborate fantasy just so she could sue me. Happens to a lot of doctors. Uh, got to feel like I let you down. You actually did the total opposite. You taught me so much. I'm really going to miss you. Hey, uh... Would you like to get a coffee or a donut or something? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. More wine? Please. wasn't really in love with her. You married somebody, but you, you didn't love her. I felt sorry for her. And she was raising a daughter on her own. She needed financial help. And at the time, I thought it was the right thing to do. Well, why did you break up? She fell <gasps> in love with somebody else. So what about you? Are you seeing anybody? No, I, uh, I haven't been on a date in a while. I guess you could say that I am allergic to guys. Hmm. Sounds serious. Is it contagious? Not all guys, just, just guys my own age. And what's wrong with guys your own age? They just want to party. And they all have something to prove. Like, hey, baby, you want to get drunk and hook up? Like, I don't know, I'm just sick of it. I just want an intelligent guy to have a conversation with, you know, and no drama. There's always so much drama dating people your own age. Huh. Tell me about it. It's weird. I, uh... All my friends have always been a couple years older than me. Maybe it's because I was the youngest of four kids. And everybody always says that I that I have a father complex. Hmm. Why do they say that? Well, um, my last boyfriend, he was, uh, well, he was 51. Really? I guess I have a thing for older men. Is that weird? No, I really don't, don't. I have an opinion. Can I make a confession? Sure. When I heard that you were going to be a teacher at my school, I was really excited because of your reputation as a cardiologist and all, but uh, I don't know. When I, when I met you that first day, I kind of, well, developed a, a crush on you. You're playing with fire, my friend. You're about to make a great big mistake. Now call her a taxi and send her home, pal.
So, uh, how do you like Phoenix? Have you found a nice place to live? Oh, I did. I did. But it's too big for one person. Oh, yeah? How big? Oh, my God. I know, right? Uh-huh. Want to take a tour? Uh, yeah, why not? There's a living room, uh-huh. kitchen, a bag of swimming pool, waterfall, miniature golf course. Are you trying to impress me? Is it working? Mm-hmm. Want to see my screening room? And this is the master bedroom. Through that window, I have the most wonderful view. You forgot about that photo, didn't you? You blew it, man. You were this close, man, to get that wonderful girl to fall in love with you, but no, you had to be a moron and put your sickness in a picture frame on your bedside table. She's gonna turn around and walk out of here like they all do. Watch. Now this is impressive. Is it? Yes. Shows how much you care about me. Mm. Does it? How much you love me. Mm. What are you doing in my house? Call the police. No. Please. Don't. I was wrong. About everything. I can see now how happy you can make a woman, and I... I could have had that, but I just pushed you away. I borrowed your toothbrush. Hope you don't mind. No problem. All right. I have got to get to class. But last night was incredible. Mm. You okay? I just had a dream that uh, Sophie was here with us. Yeah, well, that will never happen. Because if she comes anywhere near you, she'll have to deal with me. And I'll kick her ass all the way to New Mexico. <laughs> what do you got going on this afternoon? Well, now that I'm unemployed, not much. Well, my last class is at two. So do you want to go for a hike or something? Sounds great. All right, and I'll see you later.
She loves me. She loves you. Damn right she does. Got the olive oil. Feeling this morning, Albert. I'm not doing very well. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. What's that? You need to help me. Yellow pain. Going Girl, yeah. mm -hmm. Don't hurt me. Mm -hmm. Don't hurt me. Maybe a little physical therapy might help. <laughs> oh, it's kind of tender. Better take a look. See what the problem is. Don't, don't hurt me. <gasps> oh, my God. God, it's so big. Oh, God. I'm gonna need a whole team of nurses just to lift it up. Oh, God. Oh, oh. That's what guys like to hear, right? No. Oh. Lab results are in. According to women all over the world, you and your little friend have been causing all sorts of problems. Oh. So you know what I think we're gonna do? Oh. We're gonna remove it. <laughs> What's that? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't have any anesthetic. I'm gonna go nice and slow so you feel everything. No, no. One. Two. Three. I just forgot my homework. <laughs> Albert? Are you okay? Hello? What the hell? <laughs> Albert! <laughs> Who did this to you? Help me. Stop! You're a fool to be with him. I'll be the judge of that. He's gonna kill you. Just like you tried to kill me. I'm okay. Oh, I'm tiny. Oh, my God. Hey, Mom. I'm on the way home. Good, finally. Like I did what we talked about, all right? If the cops call the house, you know what to say, huh? You've been here the entire time with me. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Drive safe. I'll get back soon. I love you. Okay, I love you, too. Her name is Sophie Green. She's a former patient of mine. The same Sophie Green who accused you of kidnapping and attempted murder. I see you did your homework on me, didn't you? Sure did. Sophie refuses to accept the jury's decision. She's crazy. Yeah, well, if I were her, I'd be a little crazy, too. Yeah? What's that supposed to mean, officer? A lot of people in law enforcement were surprised when we heard you got off so easy. You mean you were surprised when the jury found me not guilty? Sure. I'll say it however you like. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't be working in this case if you feel that way. Miss Peterson, you're one of the students? I was, until the university fired him because of all the lies Sophie told about him. And the two of you are now, what, sleeping together? That's none of your business. Come on, what are you doing at your teacher's house at 7 in the morning? 
Is that your makeup bag in the upstairs bathroom? Yes. Okay? We're sleeping together. And I'm in love with him, all right? So what? That doesn't change the fact that Sophie Green just tried to kill us. Melissa. No, you, they're talking to us like we're the criminals. Are you going to arrest Sophie Green or what? Don't worry. We'll deal with Ms. Green. <laughs> we have several witnesses, Dr. Beck, who can corroborate her alibi. You're kidding me. And you believed them? I don't care what they say. That woman was in this house and she right tried... Now, it's your word against theirs. Thanks a lot, Detective. You guys are the best. Ah. What's going on? According to Sophie's roommates, she went home to California right after she was expelled. What? Yeah. And Sophie's parents were in L.A. are saying she was with them this morning. <laughs> I mean, of course Sophie's parents are going to lie for her. It gets worse. Police found a credit card purchase and a security video that proves Sophie was at a coffee shop near her house in Los Angeles at exactly the same time we said she was at this house trying to kill me. Okay, so her mom dressed up like her, used her credit card and bought a coffee. Are these cops completely clueless or what? Regardless, she put together an alibi. She thought of everything. So like, did these cops just think we made this up? I don't know, maybe. It's probably them again. This is Dr. Beck. Hi, Dr. Beck. It's me. Sophie? Sleep with it underneath my bed every single night. And believe me, I know how to use it. Okay, hold on a second. What is it you really want? Because if it's money... I don't want your money. What I want is to shove this thing underneath your chin and pull the trigger. You a girl from there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Listen, sister. I don't want to hurt you. If you try and stop me like you did this morning, I'm gonna have to kill you too. You can't get away with this. The cops know what you're trying to do. The cops? Really? I gave the cops and the lawyers a mountain of evidence to put your little boyfriend in jail for the rest of his sick life. For some unexplained reason, the blind lady of justice just let him walk. He'll forgive me if I've lost faith in the legal system. I die trying to kill him. Well, at least I leave this planet doing what I know is right. Dr. Albert Beck is a monster. His victims are women. If you had half a brain in your head, you would run away from him as fast as you could. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. Okay? You want to hurt Albert? You're going to have to go through me. If you stand by that creep, then you're going to die right along with him. Good night, you two. Sleep well. Albert, what are we going to do? Well, I'll tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to panic. You heard her. She's insane. She's going to... Oh she's saying that she's going to... It's okay, calm down. It's okay, baby. No, it's not okay. I'm in love with you, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. But how can I do that if there's this crazy woman that says she's going to come back here and she's going to kill us? Okay, look. We'll contact the local police, and if they don't want to help us, Contact the state police or the FBI. That you're joking, right? You're no, joking. I'm, I'm deadly serious. You hear how the cops were talking to you this morning? They're on her side. They're claiming that she wasn't even here this morning when I was here as a witness. Look, don't you get it? The cops hate you. They, they think that you tried to kidnap her and kill her. And just like Sophie, they can't accept what the court has already proven to be true. You're innocent. Albert, listen to me. The cops are hoping that she kills you. They're going to let her do it, and they're not going to stop her. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I don't know. What are you thinking? We have to kill her. I don't want to talk like that, but you know as well as I do that the cops are not going to protect us from her. I'm a doctor. I'm not going to kill somebody. I took an oath to heal. That's all. If we don't do something sooner or later, she's going to come up here and shotgun the both of us. How would we do?
do it. Maybe we'll buy a gun? Uh. We could get it off the black market. Something that uh, can't be traced. And you know, if we pack enough food, water, and gas, we could drive to California and back without stopping. And there'll be no record of us even leaving Arizona. Then we go to her house. We wait outside. And then, when the time is right, we can shoot her. And when it's all over, you can be my alibi and I'll be yours. And we can tell the cops that we never even left Arizona. Tell me we're gonna do this. We are gonna do this. You be careful. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. You know what to tell Dad? Yeah. I'll see you soon. No. Baby, no, you won't. Why is she stopping? Look. She's probably here to buy her shotgun shells. I guess she wasn't kidding. We can't do this. What? This is insane. No, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you're the one who taught me into this. Now don't tell me you can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Albert. I thought I could do this. I just... I can't do this. Okay. You stay here. Close your eyes. And when you hear the gunshot, you start the car. All right. All right. You can do this? Mm-hmm. Wait, let's just... Let's just think about this. I love you. I love you so much. What the hell? Melissa, what are you doing here? Forgive me. Help! One minute telling me you can't do it, and the next minute you're blowing a freaking. I don't know what got into me, okay? I just, I freaked. Yeah, you freaked all right. I'm sorry. I was just trying to save your life. Oh man. Okay. Los Angeles County Coroner's Office has just identified the body of a woman found shot to death inside a burning vehicle late last Tuesday.
According to police, 20-year-old Sophie Green was sitting in her car parked in a Van Nuys alley when an unidentified shooter approached her and opened fire. Once LA County firefighters arrived on scene, they discovered Ms. Green's car completely engulfed in flames. It was only once that blaze was extinguished that firefighters discovered there was a body inside the car. According to a pathology report, coroners had to use dental records to identify Ms. Green's body because it was so badly burned. Police have yet to determine the cause for the blaze. However, okay. investigators tell us... It's over. Okay? It's over. This is Dr. Beck. Dr. Beck, Detective Young with Phoenix Metro. How are you today? I'm fine, Detective. What can I do for you? Sophie Green was found murdered Tuesday night in L.A. No, I hadn't heard. We'd like to ask you a few questions, if that's all right. Would you say we drop by in, what, an hour? Sure, come on by. I'll be here. Dr. Beck, Detective Young and family. Hey, they're here. Albert, the cops are at the front door. All right, I'll be out in a minute. Are you ready? No, I'm scared. They didn't ask to talk to me, did they? No, but I really want you there. Yeah, but that doesn't look good for you if I'm always with you. Oh, baby. Okay, look, I'm gonna stay up here and listen. If you need anything, just call me, and I'll come down, okay? Dr. Beck, are you home? Please, look, my love, I, I'm not ready to talk to them. But please, please. Okay. How was she killed exactly? She was shot several times and her car was set on fire. Oh my God, that's horrible. If I remember correctly, at your trial, didn't Sophie Green say that you tried to fake her death by setting her car on fire? You know, she said a lot of things that just weren't true. Yes, but what a coincidence. I mean, first you're accused of faking her death by lighting her car on fire. And then just last Tuesday night, Sophie is murdered. For real this time. And her car goes up in flames. What are the odds? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Jeez, maybe one in a billion. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you last Tuesday? Here, at home. Can anybody verify that? Uh, Melissa, she was with me. Who's Melissa again? Oh, right, she's the... 20-year-old college student he's now sleeping with. You do have a thing for the young ones, don't you, Doc? Help! Help me, Oh, my God. He's insane. He tried to kill me. Melissa, why did you do this? Wait, did I do this? Dr. Albert Beck, you're under arrest. You OK? I don't know. Go after him. I'll call for backup. This is Detective Young. Oh, oh, oh. 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 
Why did she do that to me? Why, why, why? Call yourself. started asking him if any of the allegations were true. Like, if he actually did kidnap Sophie. And, I don't know, he completely changed and became a different person and started screaming at me and yelling at me. It's okay. And... Take your time. <laughs> and then he, uh... He tied me up and he... He raped me, practically. I mean, I know we were in a relationship and I said I loved him, but when I told him I didn't want to have his eggs, he just... He wouldn't listen. No means no. Exactly. And then he just kept rambling on and on about how he was going to kill Sophie. And uh, if I didn't obey him, he was going to cut my boobs off or something. Unbelievable. We found these under the bed. Do they look familiar? Yeah. Uh, I think he was tinkering with that for a science project or something. I don't know. He didn't tell me what it was, though. What is it? C4. Construction dynamite with a remote detonator. Everything you need to make a bomb. That explains Sophie's car going up in flames. Did he say where he might go after he killed Sophie? For instance, to Mexico again, or...? No, uh, no, nothing like that. When do you think you know somebody? When do you think you know what love is? <laughs> God, I'm such an idiot. Don't worry, we'll find the bastard. A prominent figure in the world of cardiothoracic surgery is the target of a statewide manhunt today. Dr. Albert Beck is wanted for the murder of a 20-year-old female medical student whose body was found in her burning car last week in Los Angeles. Dr. Beck was last seen at his mansion in Phoenix, where local police discovered he had been holding another female medical student hostage for several weeks. He is considered armed and dangerous. This is the second time that Dr. Beck has been accused of attempting to kill Miss Green. What if somebody came in the house and tied her up when I went downstairs? <laughs> you don't really believe that, do you, man? I mean, they say love makes you stupid, but in your case, it's terminal. She loved me, man. I know she did. Even you said she did. She had me fooled, too, pal. I want to call her. I want to see her again. No! You want to stay away from her and get out of this country as fast as you can? That's really easy for you to say, but you don't realize, man, nobody, nobody has ever loved me the way she did. Well, that's because she was pretending. I mean, she framed you, pal. You say she's not like all the rest? You're right. She's worse. But I was... I was so happy with her. What really happened between you guys? Oh, I don't know, it's kind of a long story, but I'm gonna go run some errands, okay? I'll, I'll tell you later. Okay. All right, I'll see you later. seeing you. Bye.
me? How'd it go? Good, I think I got everything that we need, and you are gonna look awesome. <laughs> Thank you for letting me stay here. Yeah, of course. Anytime it's my aunt and uncle's place, and uh -huh. they're always on the road, so it's not a big deal uh -huh. at all. You look like a princess. Stop. Kind of look like Elsa. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. I'll take that. Here, let me get some pressure back. There we go. Time to do it. Sophie Green is dead. She sure is. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. <laughs> okay, don't you dare start crying because I'll have to do your makeup, okay? Okay. okay. Look, you hungry? I'm starving. I'll go make us some lunch. Shadow. Oh, you'll get used to it. I'm not gonna lie, I am loving this. <laughs> Sophie, are you all right? You know, I understand why Sophie hates me. I get it. But all I ever did to you was love you. Just let her go. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Answer me! Or she died. Sophie and I, Sophie and I have been best friends since we were six years old. And even though my family left LA when I started high school, I've always considered her my sister. After she lost her court case against you, she came to me, asked for my help. Of course, I said yes. We researched the internet and learned how to make a bomb. It's actually too easy. I got a cadaver from the anatomy lab at the medical school. And while I was begging you not to kill her, Sophie put her dead double behind the wheel of her car. And then she set the bomb to blow. Melissa, what are you doing here? Forgive me. Sophie pressed her car alarm and that was my cue to shoot the gas tank. Whoa, 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 whoa. I guess I shot the gas tank. Let's go, let's go. Genius. While you and I were getting rid of the pistol, Sophie borrowed one from your playbook, Dr. Beck. With the help of a family friend, she snuck into the county coroner's office, went to the computer, and made sure the cadaver's dental records matched hers. Sophie told me how you tied her up two years ago, so I matched that exactly. What's with the disguise? Well, we can't exactly frame you for murder if your victim's still alive, right? So Sophie's gonna spend the rest of her life in hiding just so you can rot in jail. And you did all this because she is your best friend. And there's one more reason. I did this because I'm gonna be a doctor. And you're an embarrassment to my profession. You shouldn't have said that. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Welcome to Cardiological Systems 101 B. I am Dr. Albert Beck, and today we will be performing a double open heart transplant. Let's talk about why these girls are undergoing surgery today. Basically, both these women suffer from what we call cardio treacheritis. Cardio meaning heart, of course, and treacheritis meaning, well, <laughs> treacherous. In plain English, these girls are born with evil, duplicitous hearts. So today, I am going to saw through their breast bones, rip open their rib cages, and surgically remove their beating hearts. I will heal them. Well, how do you heal treacherous hearts, Dr. Beck? Anybody? No? By giving them all the love I possibly can. And once their hearts are pure again, I will transplant Melissa's clean heart into Sophie's body because nobody has ever loved me like Melissa. And then I will transplant Sophie's clean heart into Melissa's body because deep down I know Sophie is grateful to me for saving her life. Finally, once her new healthy hearts have adapted to their new bodies, both Sophie and Melissa will love me unconditionally. And the three of us will live happily ever after in my Hacienda Grande in Cabo San Lucas. All right, now it's time to inject the anesthetic into Melissa so she sleeps during the removal of her heart from her chest cavity. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? No, you're not sorry. And you made that quite obvious. Sophie forced me to betray you, I swear. No, she didn't. No, I just, I want to make love to you again. No man has ever loved me like you love me. So you'll untie me. You can take me to the bedroom and love me like you used to. I will. Thank you. After the surgery. <gasps> oh. oh my god. Uh. <sighs> I know who you are, Melissa. You're very sick. But you can be cured if you just let me operate. So give me your hand, and let's go to surgery. Who? I'm not sick. You are. Melissa, calm down. We've got a roadblock on every major highway in the state. Don't worry. We'll find him, and we'll make sure he spends the rest of his life in jail. Yeah, okay. right. That's what you said last time. Last time around, Detective Sandler and I weren't on the case. We are now. I'm sorry, ma'am. We didn't get your name. It was Susan. Susan Brown. You look familiar. She sure does. You're Sophie Green. Aren't you supposed to be dead? Uh, well, you see, um, here's the thing.
I still think it could have worked out. <laughs> Stop the car. These girls are totally wrong for you, man. I don't think so. I think they're just, you know, inexperienced. Oh, you are impossible. No, no, listen, listen. Look, listen. Once they allow themselves, you know, to get to know me, they'll fall in love with me. I know they will. What the hell does it take, man? How many times do you need to go through this? How many girls do you try to kill you before you realize you need to stay away from them? And I'm not just talking young girls. All women, smug face. Man, you're not equipped to be in a relationship with a female. So do yourself a favor. In fact, do us all a favor. Buy yourself a beach house in Costa Rica and live out the rest of your days alone. You feel me? Alone. A-L-O-N-E. No chicks, no senoritas, nada. You got me? I don't, 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 I don't know if I can do that. I know it's a lousy retirement plan. But you have to do it, buddy. You have to. No! No, 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 no! No, no! Oh! I'm leaving you here. I'm done with you. And if you think for one millisecond I'm gonna give up on love, you're wrong, my friend, because she's out there. My baby's out there, and I'm gonna find her.